Okay, so this video is going to quickly go through the basics of inverse functions. Okay, normally we give functions a name and we generally call them f. All right, so a function sometimes takes in x values, so we call it f of x. And f of x, if it's a one-to-one -one function, it will have an inverse function, and we call that f negative 1 of x. So um, that's the notation. f to the power of negative 1 of x means the inverse function. Now, inverse functions have the following properties. Uh, the original function has to be one-to-one. -one. The inverse function is a reflection in the line y equals x, the original function and the x, y value swap around, uh, and the domain and range swap around. So that means uh, the inverse function, the domain is the range of the original, and the range is the domain of the original function. Okay, so I'll quickly show you with y equals, um, we'll, make, we'll put, do proper notation. So I call my function f, all right, it takes in, uh, let's say, 0 to infinity, that's the domain, and it maps to some real numbers, so a whole number, a fraction, a decimal, a third, whatever, just goes to some real numbers, and I call my function x squared, all right, that means it would look like this. That's y equals f of x, that's y equals x squared. All right, for zero to infinity. And the inverse function for this is root x. Okay, and if I draw root x, it looks something like that. Okay, and what you'll notice is it's a reflection in the line y equals x. So I'll try and show you that here, okay? So if I just plot some points, right? This point here is going to be 1, 1. And then if this point here was x is 2, well, what is y when x is 2? It's 4, so that's the point 2, 4. Sorry, that's the point two, four. Uh, and what we notice is on the square root function, right, it also has the point four, two. Four, two. Okay, because this is y equals root x. So when you sub in x is four, you get back y is two. And what you might notice is that the x, y values are swapped around. Okay, so Hopefully you see that the x, y values are swapped around. Now, there's a process for finding inverse functions, okay? And we use that idea of things swapping around. So we'll do another example with a cubic, okay? So say I had a cubic which was in my sort of normal uh, point of inflection form, right? And I restrict my domain from. Oh, no, cubics don't need restricted domains because they're one to one anyway. Um, okay, so what does this graph look like? f of x equals x minus 1 cubed plus 3. It looks like this. Uh, normally my point of inflection is at 0, 0, but this point of inflection is at 1, 3. Okay, y intercept x is 0, I get negative 1 cubed. Uh, which is negative 1 plus 3, which is 2. Okay, so my cubic is going to look something like that. Right? I'm not going to worry about the x intercept for now. I just want to illustrate how to find inverse functions. Okay, but basically, this is y equals f of x. That's my cubic, and I have to label my point of inflection. Normally, I have to label my y-intercept and x-intercept. I'm not going to do that just yet. I just want to um, show you how to 
find the inverse function. So we use the idea that things are swapped around, the xy value swap around. So what we do is we let y equal our function. Okay, and then I swap the x and y values. So I make y x and I make x y. So we get this, and then I need to solve for y. So I need to subtract three both sides. And the opposite of cubing is taking the cube root. And therefore, y equals the cube root of x minus 3. Um, plus 1. Okay, and that's my inverse function. And I... Label it like that. Now, this is hard to sketch unless I have all the points here or I have a calculator or an internet site, something available. So I'm going to try and sketch it um, by finding all these points, the y intercept, x intercept, and then looking at a reflection of the line y equals x, and then we'll check using a internet site called Desmos. Right, so how do we find the y intercept here? You make x is 0. I think I already said that. So we get uh, y is 2. Okay. And how do we find the y, the x-intercept? You make y equals 0. So we have 0 equals x minus 1 cubed plus 3. So we get the cube root of negative 3, so x minus 1, and x equals 1, plus the cube root of negative 3, whatever that is. Okay, so that's another point there. Which is 1 plus the cube root of negative 3. And zero. All right. So what I'm going to try and do is uh, sketch it by swapping the x and y values around. So if x is one, y is three is here. Then x is three, and y is one is probably around here. Okay. And if x is zero and y is two is here, then x is two and y is Zero is probably mm, okay. So my sketch is not very good. I have to show you on a, on the website. It's probably here to zero, and then I have another point. I think we have to show you on the website. Um, but basically, it has to be a reflection in this line, y equals x. So I think it's going to look something like... Um, something like this. Alright, let's just check. So, Desmos is a good website. Um, And my graph was x minus 1 cubed, x minus 1 cubed plus 3. And my inverse function was the cube root of x minus 3 plus 1. So 1 plus the cube root of x minus 3. Another way of doing a cube root is the same as the power of a third. Okay, so that's my inverse fun that's my function, that's my inverse function. And what does it look like? Well, the red one is the original and the blue one is the inverse. Okay, so what it looks like is that. Can you see the point of inflection there at 1, 3? And then the blue one's the inverse. You have the other point, 3, 1. Okay. 
and everything's been reflected. Okay, so again, the y-intercept here is 0, 2, and I have this point here, 2, 0, and everything gets reflected in this line y equals x. Okay, so the green one is y equals x, and it acts like a mirror. So you can see how that point is the same distance away from the green as the blue one is from the green. Okay, everything acts like a mirror, so that's the inverse. Uh, function. So just to recap, what did we do? We did the following, all right? Have our function f of x equals x minus 1 q plus 3. We let y equal our function, then we swap the xy values around. Then we solve for y, and that gives us our inverse function, okay? Then you have to find if you're sketching them, you know, x intercepts, y intercepts, etc. But not a bad sketch on my part. Okay, it's a little bit off, off scale, but it's still sort of looks like what it should look like. All right. And the only tricky part here is ensuring that your function is uh, your original function is one to one because if you look at um, y equals x squared in its entirety it looks like that all right like a parabola and the y equals positive root x is the inverse for this bit all right and the y equals negative root x would look like that, which would be uh, the inverse of the red bit. So you just have to be careful um, and you might have to restrict domains in order for an inverse function to exist. And that's it.